Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 26th of November 2018 and the time has just gone 9.45 GMT. Uh, we've had a fairly positive start to the Euro European session uh, this morning. Uh, stocks in Asia largely finished higher overnight and they're certainly higher in Europe this morning. Uh, and there's a few factors playing into the positive mix uh, this morning. Uh, largely, um, the Italian government are, there are sources saying that, that the Italian government are showing a bit of flexibility uh, in relation to the, to the size of the budget deficit they're planning and running next year. Um, until very recently, the Italian government were very, very much fixated, were very much uh, focused on running a budget deficit of 2.4%, um, increasing budget increasing public spending as a way of boosting the economy and that has actually gotten them into a bit of trouble with the EU but now it seems that there at least seem to be a bit of flexibility around the 2.4% deficit and now they, and there are sources saying that they're not necessarily fixated on the 2.4% level so they, so they could look at run, running a potentially a smaller budget deficit than planned and that could actually kind of um, that could prevent them from getting financial dis 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 um, disciplinary action from the European Union uh, which, which that has helped um, the Italian government bonds and in turn it has also helped uh, the Italian stock market and also the wider Eurozone stock market too. Uh, there's also been a fairly uh, decent rebound uh, in the oil market. Oil uh, had a major, uh, yet again, had a major sell-off uh, on Friday, losing over 7%. Uh, but we have seen a bit of a bounce back in the oil market this morning and that, that has only uh, that has not only just actually helped oil stocks on oil related companies it's also just kind of lifted the sentiment because a weak oil price in, in some in some um, some quarters uh, re represents uh, perceived weakness for demand so bounce back in oil actually kind of gives more of a kind of a positive message that, that, that the global economy is actually maybe got a higher demand for oil uh, than some traders had originally priced in uh, at the back end of, at the back end of this week uh, we will have the um, G summit 20 meeting and, the, and everyone's going to be watching the, the, meeting between, the meetings between China and the US and at least some traders are optimistic that we could see some, some progress uh, uh, being made at that meeting. Uh, even if you're not sure of any progress we could see a kind of a the beginning of a potential improvement in the relationship uh, between the two sides. Um, over the weekend we heard from the EU summit and essentially the European Union have agreed, on, uh, agreed amongst themselves uh, on the deal that, that Theresa May agreed with them during, during the middle of last week. And essentially the EU are, are effectively saying this is the deal, um, Theresa May, uh, you either accept it um, or that's it. It's very much, there's no more tweaks to it. This is going to be the deal if you have any deal whatsoever. So Theresa May is going to have a very difficult few weeks to actually kind of sell that deal um, to, our, to our party and also to obviously potentially to members of the opposition as well. Um, so that's going to be, of course, going to be uh, in play over the next couple of weeks. Uh, taking a look now at some of the major markets, starting off with the FTSE 100. I'll take a look at the FTSE on a weekly chart uh, for a very good reason. I want to discuss this red line here, the 200-week moving average. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of seen as kind of a fairly decent um, uh, barometer of whether a market's, pot, you know, a market's in, a, in a strong shape or negative shape. And if you take a look at, at the 200 week moving average in the last few weeks, we see that we did manage to drop below it and then we pushed back above it for a couple of weeks and we've, we've been kind of dancing around it the last couple of, for the last couple of, couple of weeks. So if we hold above the 200 week moving average, that would be a positive sign and, we, and it could suggest we might see a bit of gains. We, we could look at retesting the October high or perhaps we, we could even actually look at uh, heading back down to these levels here in September at 7,220, uh, but if we fall back below the 200-week moving average, which comes into play uh, at 6,966, if you manage to fall back below that, we could be looking at heading back down towards uh, the lows of, uh, of March, which come into play at 6,839. Uh, I'll be talking about the 200-week moving average on the DAX, on the German market now in a second. I'll be, I'll be discussing a bit of Dow theory. And once again, I want to start off by looking at the the, the weekly chart, the two and a week uh, the two and a week moving average here, the red line here, which comes to the play at eleven thousand five hundred and ten. And we can notice here that the the DAX is back below its two and a week moving average, and in the last few weeks, it's probably spent more time than not below its two and a week moving average. So 
While a negative sign coming out of the DAX, and while we remain below the 200-week moving average, it's likely we could see further losses on the DAX. And should that be the case, we could be heading back down towards 11,000. And if you go below 11,000, we could see potentially further losses from there. Now, uh, that, one, of the, one of the tenets of, 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 of that, that theory is that all the averages must um, the averages must confirm each other. So we 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 can see here that the the DAX is below its 200 week moving average, whereas the FTSE 100 is kind of dancing around its 200 week moving average. Now, if both markets are below the 200 week moving average, we can be more confident that both markets are going to continue to push lower. If both markets are above their 200 week moving average, we can be more confident that the, the wider market is going to push higher. But if one's above, one's below, it, that's a bit of indecision. Um, so that's why I think it is uh, important to, if you're trading one market, it's important to keep an eye on what the other one is doing because usually speaking, uh, equity, major equity indices tend to actually kind of um, move in line with each other. And when they, when, they start, when they don't do that, that's when there's often a bit of indecision. Uh, but, but when they all move in the same direction at the same time, you can be more confident that the wider move is going to continue. So if you see, while the... While the um, the DAX remains below its 200 week average, and should we see the FTSE 600 fall below its 200 week moving average, we can become more confident the DAX is going to lose ground. Um, if they do see a push higher in the DAX and it manages to reclaim its 200 week moving average, we could see resistance come into play at this area here at 11,692. And if we go beyond that, our resistance potentially could, could come into play at 12,000. It's a big psychological number, but also if we draw a line. Uh, if you draw a resistance uh, a line from the highs of June to the highs of July and then to also the highs of September, we get this trend line here. And if you do, if the DAX were to kind of push on higher from here, um, the should we see trend line support, it could come into play in sorry trend line resistance rather, it could, could come into play in around the kind of twelve thousand mark. Take a look now what's going on over in the US on the S and P five hundred. So if you take a look on a daily chart, and if you draw a, a, a trend line, which connects the lows of February 2016 with the lows of November 2016, we get this trend line here. And we can see here that, we, that, this, this, uh, that, that this trend line was uh, respected uh, back in late October. Now, the market did manage to bounce nicely off of it, but the market has managed to turn over on itself yet again. As we can see, it's actually still holding above this trend line support here. So, so the more times it kind of touches this trend line and it kind of bounces off it and remains above it, the more confident we can be we, we can be that the market is going to hold above that trend line. Now, if you manage to hold above this, this trend line here, we could look at retesting 2,700. If we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting the 200-day moving average, this red line here, at 2,762. If we go beyond that, we could be looking at, at uh, testing the uh, the early November high, which, which kind of coincides with the um, the water day moving average, this yellow line here, which comes into play at 2,821. But if you do see the market drop below this, uh, this this trend line here, we might see support come into play at 2,600. And if you go below that, I mean, if you do have a, a slight of sell off below 2,600, we could be looking heading back down towards the February lows back here at 2,532. And speaking uh, of Dow theory, I'm going to now look at, look at, the, at the Dow Jones. I'm going to talk about uh, of trend line support and once again how the uh, the uh, the market the, the the averages must confirm each other. So on the Dow Jones, if we draw a trend line between the lows of February, March, April, and May, we get this trend line along here. Now, to be fair, the market did trade below it uh, back in late October, but it did manage to hold close above the trend line, and uh, in 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 a um, that the following session, the market quickly moved up, up, up off the trend line, but lo and behold, the market has turned over on itself, dropped back below the trend line, and we now appear to be trying to reclaim the trend line yet again. So, like we're seeing with the Dow Theory and the DAX and the and the FTSE 100 in relation to the 200 week moving average, if the SP 500 can hold above its trend line support from the lows of February February 2016, and if the and if the Dow Jones can hold above its recent trend line support, we can be more confident uh, that the both markets are going to push on higher. Alternatively, if both markets fall back below their respective trend lines, their trend line supports, 
think we can be more confident both markets are going to be are going to move lower. But once above his trendline support and that is below his trendline support, that that's where the indecision comes from, and it can be and, and it's a, you can be a bit less confident in the potential move ahead of us. So it's often a good idea to keep an eye on what the other markets doing if you're trading one particular index. So if you do manage to uh, move back above the trendline support, we could be looking at hitting up to, towards 25,000. Uh, if you go beyond 25,000, we could be looking at uh, attracting 26,000, the next big psycho psychological number. And then beyond that, we could be, we could be testing the early November high of, of 26,278. Uh, should we drop back below the uh, this trendline support and we have a size of break below, we could be looking, heading back down towards 24,000. And if you go below that, you can be looking at heading back down towards one of the, one of the lows in early May at 23,539. Taking a look now at what's going on in the oil market. Like, like I said, we had a fairly deep we had a, a side, we had a rebound in the oil market this morning, but oil has had a, a terrible time in the last six or seven weeks. Since the highs in October, Brent crude has dropped. Well, this is, this is going. Uh, Brent crude has lost, lost about 30%, uh, whereas WTI has lost over 30% in, in, that sh in that fairly short time period. So we can see it's a very strong, aggressive move to the downside. Classic example of a downward trend, lower lows and lower highs. But if you can hold above, um, if you, if you can hold above Friday's low, we could see a bit of a rebound uh, in, in WTI. And if you do manage to kind of push on higher from here, we could be looking at heading back up towards this area here at 67 spot 50. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking up towards $69 a barrel. And then if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading towards $70 a barrel. But we would need to actually kind of re retake the 200 to be 200 100 day moving average at 74 spot 06 to be more confident that the recent downward trend has come to an end because for, for, the, for the last six or seven weeks it's been an aggressive downward trend and uh, selling the rallies has, has been a very popular strategy for some traders if the market does manage to turn over on itself yet again and if you take out the recent lows we could be looking heading back down towards this level here in at 56 spot 73 and if you go below that we could be looking heading back down towards $55 per barrel. Take a look now at what's going on in WTI. Similar looking chart here. Had a very aggressive sell off since early October. You know, classic example of a downward trend, lower lows and lower highs. If you do manage to, um, you can see here that in around the kind of fifty dollar area, that the market did manage to find some support from there. So if you, if you can hold about fifty bucks per barrel on WTI, we could look at pressing on higher, and, and if that is the case, we could be could look at heading up towards this area here at a fifty two spot fifty three, and if we go beyond that, we could look, look, look to head up back up towards fifty five dollars per barrel. But if you know, the market is well below its 200 day moving average which comes into play at 67 spot 19 so while we, we, we will hold we hold below that metric it's likely we could see further losses uh, on wti and if the market does manage to turn over on itself and if you do um, trade below 50 dollars a barrel we could be looking heading back down towards this area here in at in at 48 dollars per barrel i take a look now at a couple of currency pairs starting off with the euro dollar So the wider picture is that euro dollar had a fairly aggressive sell-off between April and August. And so then we saw a bounce back between mid-August and mid-September, or mid to late September. Uh, but since then, we have we've had uh, kind of a, a continuation of the wider downward trend, and we've seen the market uh, push lower uh, in, in the last number of weeks. And ultimately, while euro dollar remains below the kind of 115, 115, 10 area, this level here, it's likely we could see further moves to the downside of the currency pair. And should we look to push on lower from here, we could look, we could look to test the, the mid-November low at 1 spot 12.16. And if you go below that, we could be looking heading back down towards 1 spot 11.10. Any rallies might run into resistance uh, in at 1 spot 15, 1 spot 15.10. And then should, should we go beyond that, uh, we could be looking at, uh, at heading up back up towards the, the, the 117, sorry, kind of the 118.15 region here. Which is the uh, the late September high. Take a look now at now on the pound versus the uh, U.S. dollar. So similar situation here, where the dollar, uh, where the pound lost a lot of ground to the dollar uh, between 
between April and August. Had a, a staged a bit of a rally, uh, that have come back uh, mid August to late September. But ever, ever since then, we have been kind of largely been pushing to the downside. It, it, the economic indicators of the UK, uh, by and large, have been have been good. It's just uncertainty surrounding Brexit has been really kind of holding the currency holding the currency pair back. And until we hear some kind of concrete news, one way or the other. Uh, if if it looks likely that we that, that Theresa May's deal is going to be accepted, uh, traders would appreciate the certainty, and we could, we could potentially see our money actually go back into sterling because, like I was saying, the uncertainty surrounding Brexit has been really hanging over the British pound. Uh, but on the other side, on, on, on the other side of the coin, if it looks like we are heading for a no deals a no deal scenario in relation to Brexit. That could put major pressure uh, on the pound, and we could see, look at uh, um, pushing, taking off the most recent low. So, take a look at the price action here. Uh, while we, we remain below the 130 mark uh, on, uh, on on cable um, sterling dollar, we could look at actually going to continue to push on lower. And should we push on lower from here, we could be like retesting uh, the April lows in at one spot 2661. Uh, and if we go below that, we could be looking at heading back down towards this area here. A level not seen since June 2017, which comes to play at one spot 2590. Uh, any moves to the upside, like I said, might run into resistance at 130. And if you go beyond 130, we could be looking at heading up towards uh, the early November high and at 131. Sorry, one spot 3174. Um, what, what I'm not going to do is take a quick look at the week ahead. Uh, the week ahead can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com and under news and analysis, you will find um, some of the updates that we do get posted to news and, uh, and analysis. I'll talk about the insights uh, in, on our trading platform in one moment time. Um, so I'm taking a look at, at, the, week, at the week ahead. Um, so looking ahead to um, the middle of the week, uh, we have UK bank stress tests. Um, so basically, the Bank of England is essentially going to actually kind of Front uh, stress test the kind of the balance sheet strength of the, of the major British banks, Lloyd's, um, Barclays, um, um, HSBC, Barclays, and so on. So those results are going to be out during the week. On Wednesday, uh, over in the US, we have Dick's Sporting Goods stores, uh, Sporting Goods uh, third quarter numbers coming out. Um, on Wednesday and on Wednesday and Thursday from the US, we have third quarter GDP figures and also the, the minutes from the latest Fed meeting. On Friday, we have the G the G Summit Summit 20 in Buenos Aires. Uh, like I was say, like I was saying at the top of the uh, top of the video, um, all, all most of the focus is going to be on the meetings between the US and China in, over in relation to trade. On Thursday, we have full year figures out from Thomas Cook, and on Thursday we also have US inflation, income, and spending. That's going to be an important one to watch because traders are quite, quite fearful that the US that the US Central Bank. Um, are going to kind of press ahead with a fairly aggressive uh, monetary policy, monetary tightening policy. Um, but other traders are less convinced that the Fed are going to con kind of continue on raising rates at a fairly fast rate into 2019. So this, these, these figures here could, could provide us with a clue uh, as to what, what kind of pace at which uh, the Federal Reserve are, are going to look to hike rates uh, in 2019. And on Thursday, we have third quarter figures from Abercrombie & Fitch, uh, the U.S. retailer um, over in the United States. Uh, that being said, um, it's also Cyber Monday today, uh, so keep an eye out for, keep an eye out for U.S. Uh, tech-focused retailers. Um, according to Adobe Analytics, um, the, the, the Black Friday sales that we saw at the back end of last week were actually a record high. And according to, uh, once again, Adobe Analytics predicts that we're going to have a record Cyber Monday in terms of sales. So please keep an eye out for U.S. retail stocks on today's session. And before I go, I just want to just, just want to state, uh, if you have any comments to make on this video or any other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.